number of other people who have worked on uh, developing the survey, um, including Mary Yang and Marielle Pinheiro and my staff, um, and uh, Sean McCarthy from uh, the Division of Drinking Water, um, and I believe there are other uh, staff from the Division of Drinking Water on as well. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Bridget Lowry, who's our Civic Spark uh, Fellow, um, who has also been helping with this as well. Um, so today, uh, we're going to uh, just walk through um, the household debt survey. Um, this is the survey that we issued on November 9th for the water systems with over 10,000 service connections. Um, and uh, we're just gonna walk through it uh, and then uh, do Q and A um, so that uh, we've got uh, everyone's questions answered. Um, we've got two hours for this, so we should be able to, to get through um, all of the, the topics and discussion. I'm just gonna give a brief intro and overview, um, and then we're gonna go straight into Q and A. So uh, thank you all for, for joining us uh, for this workshop. Um, this is a really important and uh, timely exercise uh, the board has directed us to take on, uh, given where we at are, are in the uh, arc of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, having been in, in this crisis uh, for many, many months now um, with um, hopefully uh, an end in sight sometime in 2021, um, but still a lot of uncertainty around uh, vaccine uh, distribution and uh, just overall return um, to uh, a, a pre-COVID um, uh, environment. Um, it's going to take a long time. And so um, we're at a point where our board really wanted to uh, assess um, what is the status of debt accumulation um, for uh, residential uh, customers uh, particularly given the fact that there has been a, a shutoff moratorium in place um, since April, but effective back to March, um, and that that moratorium is likely to continue so long as the state of emergency uh, uh, overall for COVID uh, continues. And so, um, again, we're, we're a number of months in. Um, we have heard a, a lot of anecdotal reports about um, accumulating household debt, um, significant for um, many systems. There have been other survey efforts uh, at the national level by some of the associations. Um, as some of you where the, the board did undertake a, uh, a different survey back in June that was focused more on system level uh, financial impacts. This is our first um, attempt to really capture at a statewide level uh, the, the household uh, and residential debt um, picture uh, so that we can inform uh, discussions amongst policymakers at both the, the state level um, and the federal level uh, about different options uh, for um, assistance uh, going forward. Uh, and, and that really is the, the goal of this survey. Um, we're trying to, uh, at a statewide level, understand what's going on with household debt um, not just the, the number of accounts that are uh, in debt, but how long, how many billing cycles, um, what's the, the debt accumulation, and, and what does that look like over the entire state, um, both geographically um, as well as in magnitude, uh, looking at how many accounts have different levels of debt so, so we can understand what percent of the, the population that is in debt um, has a smaller amount of debt versus a, a larger amount of debt, again, to inform any type of policy and assistance responses um, that may be developed in the coming year. And so um, that, that's the, the brief overview of, of the survey. Um, just to run through the, the basics of the, the timeline, um, we issued this survey on, on the 9th. Um, it's closing uh, next week, uh, right before Thanksgiving. And um, I know that there are some systems concerned about being able to, to uh, respond by then. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but we, we are on a, a fast timeline at the direction of our board um, so that we can have a statewide data set in December, um, make sure that we have a good, um, that we've done our, our data quality checks and followed up with systems. Um, 
so that we can, at the beginning of the new year, uh, be able to release our analysis um, and have uh, all of that information available to policymakers as, as well as the public. Um, and so that's, that's our timeline. Um, hopefully um, all, of the, all of you on this call um, who are water systems um, have received the survey. We sent it to as many contacts per system um, as, as we could find um, in, in short order. Uh, and if you have not received it uh, via email, um, please let us know um, on, this, uh, on this call so that we can get it to you. Um, and uh, again, uh, we did try to distribute it to as many contacts for each selected system as possible. Um, we selected uh, 150 uh, systems, um, but the, the survey is open to those that weren't selected. Um, so we would be happy to have a response from anyone on the call whose system wasn't selected um, if, if you want to fill out the survey. Um, so the, uh, all of the documents, uh, including the survey itself, um, our FAQ document, um, the list of the selected systems are posted up on the board's website, um, which is there on uh, row nine. Uh, for, for those of you looking at, able to see the, the Excel sheet up on the, the screen. Um, and uh, so, so uh, hopefully uh, a number of the questions um, people may have can be answered there. Uh, but we are doing this workshop today to make sure that we can answer all the questions and give uh, guidance and direction uh, on completing the survey. Um, so uh, there are some instructions um, on, on this sheet, on the, the opening sheet of the survey, um, which uh, are, are down there. Um, and what I'd like to do now is actually go into the survey and just run through it really quickly. So um, Marielle, if you could go to the next sheet. Great. Um, so um, this is a fairly brief survey. It does have a couple of pages, however. Um, and so this is the, the first data entry page. Um, basic, your billing frequency, um, when was the, the last uh, billing period you had, um, uh, oh, up at the top there, your ID and name. Um, and, and in terms of the billing period, um, what we're trying to do is capture as much data through the end of October as possible. Um, and so uh, given that we're, we're asking for responses in this time frame and in November, um, we're hoping that, that the majority of the systems can provide us with uh, delinquency data through October or through the last billing period that uh, came into October uh, to, to some extent, uh, understanding that uh, billing periods are, are on different cycles for different systems. Um, one thing I'll note just on something that came up already uh, was this question of, well, what if our billing period, um, most recent billing period ran into November and ended on say November 5th, um, that's fine, give us that. Um, what we want to be able to do is, is again, just have as much data through um, as, as close to the current time period as possible on, uh, on, on delinquency. Um, as we scroll down here, um, you'll see we, we did ask about um, charges uh, besides water on the bill. Um, we do to the extent possible um, want to understand what the total debt load looks like relative to the drinking water uh, debt load. I know that is more or less possible for some systems. The, the main goal of this is understanding the total amount of debt. So if you are a system that does combined billing for water and wastewater, or stormwater or electricity or, or anything else, um, if you can't break it out, we want the total, we want the total amount of debt. Um, and then uh, we uh, go down into table one, uh, again, just trying to understand for the residential sector, which is what we're interested in here. We're not interested in non-residential customers for the purpose of this survey, because our main concern is debt that could potentially lead to shutoffs um, down the road uh, for, for occupied residences. Um, and so, uh, for systems that can distinguish between single family and multifamily accounts, um, we're asking for that. 
if you can't distinguish between single family and multifamily, or you just have one overall residential class, um, then uh, you can give us that information. Um, again, we're, we're using March 4 as the start date um, for uh, the survey, um, looking at what's happened because March 4 was the date of the governor's emergency proclamation um, and the date uh, after which all services that had been shut off uh, were required to be restored uh, pursuant to uh, executive order N4220, which was uh, issued on April 2nd. Um, and uh, again, understanding that systems have different billing system uh, uh, timelines, um, it's whatever was closest to, to March 4 um, for, for entering that particular uh, row in, or, uh, in, in the survey. Um, and again, we're, we're asking for the total uh, delinquency level um, that is uh, row 26. Um, and again, if you can break it out um, uh, for drinking water specific, then, then that's row 27. Um, and you'll see at the bottom of each, um, at the bottom of each page, we've provided a text box um, to allow for systems uh, answering the survey to provide any additional context that you think will be uh, relevant and, and helpful for uh, us at the board in terms of parsing the data and making sure we're, we're reporting out uh, accurately when we uh, aggregate these numbers and, and give a statewide um, picture or even if we're doing it at, at the regional level. Um, I did see a, a question pop up already. Um, uh, if you do have questions as I'm running through, yeah, please do put them in the in the chat and, and we'll be sure to get to them um, as, as well. Um, I do want to uh, mention, because this has come up a number of times, um, about um, what, what counts as delinquent. Um, we uh, did add um, some language to our FAQ document, um, which again is on the website, about that. Um, for the purpose of this survey, we are counting delinquent as past due. Um, if your system, um, for example, counts a, uh, counts a uh, bill as past due once it has been delinquent for some number of days, uh, 10 days, 19 days, what have you, then that's, that's what you should use. Um, so uh, again, we, we, we want to um, distinguish between delinquency and, and some longer time frame um, at which point you may classify something as uncollectible or some other term um, indicating your system thinks you won't be able to collect it. That's not what we want. We want the, the total amount of current past due uh, bill debt. Um, so uh, scrolling down, I think that's, that's we've covered, um, yeah, most of what, uh, uh, oh, so, sorry, there's the, the billing cycle piece, right? So um, billing cycles. Um, if you have this information, um, great. Tell us how many billing cycles for, for each delinquent count. If you're not able to pull this information, you can provide that in the text box um, and, and tell us why you're not able to go back and, and, and figure that out. Um, I know that uh, some systems can do this and some systems may not be able to do this. Um, and so, again, I know when we get to Q&A, we can sort of talk through uh, more specifically, uh, but again, for, for, for systems that can go back and say, okay, you know, we've had five billing cycles since, uh, since March, um, and this many accounts have been delinquent for all five, this many accounts have been delinquent for three out of five, um, that's, that's what we want to understand, because we want to understand sort of the, how, how the debt has been piling up and for how long and for how many households. Um, few other things here, um, we are asking about late fees. Um, we want to understand um, to the extent that systems are asking for late, are charging late fees, um, what, what proportion and, and what of, of the total uh, delinquency amount um, is accounted for by late fees. Um, and then uh, we're also asking about what you are uh, doing in terms of offering uh, assistance um, that is not directly uh, financial in nature. So uh, in particular, um, extended uh, repayment plans. Um, so uh, that is the first page. And again, at the bottom, there's a big text box for context. 
um, hopefully um, the, the, all the systems will be able to answer and, and to the extent that they need to provide us context. But um, again, we, we, we do want to make sure we're, we are um, correctly interpreting what you tell us um, where there is uh, nuance or additional detail um, you think we need to know. So moving on to the next uh, spreadsheet, um, this is um, what we're asking for in terms of understanding the distribution of debt, um, both the distribution of magnitude and the distribution spatially of the debt. Um, and so uh, basically it's for every delinquent residential account, um, which zip code uh, does it belong to, and what is the, the level of delinquency. Um, I know that some uh, water systems have service areas that neatly overlap with one or more zip codes, and some do not. Um, we understand that, uh, again, to the extent possible, um, what we want you to do um, is tell us um, which zip codes are mainly um, within your service area, um, and uh, again, each delinquent account, you should have the address, which means you should be able to, to locate it in a, a zip code and, and be able to uh, fill out this table. Um, and again, if uh, people have specific questions about uh, co or concerns about the ability to fill out this table, that's what we want to address uh, on this call when we get to q and I think that is um, all for this table. And then there's one more sheet. Right, and so the last, uh, again, um, sheet is, is, is just more opportunity to tell us um, via uh, in writing um, what it is, what else you think we should know um, about the responses you've provided or about why you haven't been able to provide uh, a, a given response. Um, that's the survey. Again, we're looking for, um, responses uh, by uh, next week, um, a week from today, um, so that immediately when we come back from Thanksgiving uh, break, we can begin uh, analyzing uh, the data and, and, and compiling it in a way that we'll be able to release uh, uh, public uh, results in January. Um, just a couple things to note before we go to Q&A um, uh, for those that uh, are interested. Um, we also have posted on the website, um, our board did receive uh, a letter um, from uh, multiple or several uh, members of our congressional uh, delegation um, asking uh, and supporting our data collection effort, uh, as well as uh, one of our state senators. Um, those letters to the board are posted on the website as well. Um, and uh, we are intending to uh, provide state level um, estimates um, and uh, looking again at the zip code level data, um, look at if there are certain uh, areas, regions uh, by zip code um, where uh, debt accumulation is particularly concerning, um, but we are not intending to uh, uh, call out systems by name when we uh, report out this data. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, make, make everyone aware of that as well. Um, I think that that's all I wanted to cover by way of introduction. I see that there have been a number of people writing uh, questions or, or comments into the chat. So um, I wanna make sure we have enough time to go through all of those and anything else uh, that comes up. Um, and so before we go to that, um, I just wanna uh, turn to the rest of the water board team um, uh, and and see if anything anyone wants to add anything before we go to Q and A. I will just address questions as they come up. This is Marielle. Great. Hi, this is Mary. Thank you all for joining today's webinar um, and you know helping the board and the state collect this data. Um, this is a really important time to come together and um, work together on trying to figure out how many households are currently impacted right now with COVID-19. Um, this is the current state of emergency. So um, thank you guys also for participating. And um, if you guys have any questions, 
um, this will be a great time to start asking them. Just type it into the chat box. But if any questions come up after that, you're welcome to email us um, at this highlighted um, email address right here um, after the, the meeting. So thank you all for your participation and uh, we look forward to answering your questions. I should also note that um, as many of you are aware, this is one component of our survey effort. We have another um, concurrent effort, um, which is really part of a unified whole, um, looking specifically at some of our smaller and mid-sized water systems and their um, financial impacts at the system level. Um, and and that, is, uh, that survey is underway right now as well. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is go to the chat and just go through in order um, and uh, try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, if I'm responding to your question in the chat and you want to uh, ha ask a follow-up or um, you have, have you, you don't think my, my answer is clear, um, then feel free to, to unmute um, and, and ask away. Um, so, so the first question um, here, uh, is for table one, if you have single family plus multifamily plus other, e.g. irrigation accounts, et cetera, um, do you want the other category in total, included in total residential? Um, so my answer to this is gonna be probably no, um, but you know your billing system best. Um, if other, for example, includes things like irrigation accounts, those aren't residential accounts. Um, if other, however, includes things um, or is mainly comprised of, let's say, HOAs um, or um, of what we'll just call group quarters, um, like uh, uh, mental uh, health facilities or prisons um, or farm worker quarters, uh, you know, places where a lot of people live um, in group settings, if that's your other, then, then go ahead and include that in residential. Uh, but again, you know your billing system best. You know what is in there. If it's mostly residential, include it. If it's really not residential, if it's irrigation accounts, if it's some other institutional or commercial setting where most of the use is, is non-residential use, um, then I would advise uh, to not include it. Because again, what we're trying to get at here is, is a statewide picture of residential debt. Okay. Um, next question uh, looks like what delinquency time frame 30 60 90 days so uh, again I want to go back to what I, I said earlier here um, in terms of delinquency we want to understand all of the current debt everything that is past due um, if your system does not mark a bill or, or does not tag a bill as delinquent until it is some number of days past due um, then pull what you can and note that in the comment field. Um, but again, I think we, we, we want to understand what the, the current outstanding uh, debt is, not, what, um, not just what is outstanding because it's been delinquent for two billing cycles. Um, so really we're looking for a time frame um, that is um, no longer than when you classify that, uh, that amount as, as past due. Um, all right, hopefully that answered that question. Um, the next question is, what if you can't break out commercial accounts from the totals? Um, I'm going to assume this question is related to uh, certain uh, buildings um, or accounts where there's probably some commercial use and maybe some residential use. Um, the sort of the, 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 the classic case of like ground story or ground floor commercial and then um, two to four uh, levels above that of residential um, that may be classified as commercial or, or mixed use. Um, again, you know your billing system best. Um, if you think there's enough residential in there, um, then include what you've got in there in terms of, of reporting out to us. Um, we're, we're trying to get the most accurate picture of residential debt as possible, um, understanding that in some cases systems are not going to be able to um, dis, 
distinguish between commercial and residential um, for certain types of customers. Um, so use your best judgment. Um, but again, if, it, if it's not something where you know there's a lot of residential use in there, then, then please don't, don't include it in your reporting. Um, the next question, what if you can't pull delinquency info in the past? Um, system only allows us to, to run as of today. Uh, again, I, we want you to be able to report as much data as you can, given the capacity you have uh, to extract data from your billing system. Um, if you can only tell us as of today what the debt picture looks like, then please report that. Um, and tell us in the text box, you can't do it for, you can't go back. Um, and we will just use that, that total amount you're reporting um, to inform our, our current estimate of, of statewide debt. Uh, we won't be able to see how that has uh, changed over time um, for, for your system. And um, that's just the, the reality we will have to, to live with. Um, we, we understand that some billing systems have uh, just more capacity than others. Um, I think the next question is uh, essentially the same one. What if you can't pull retroactive data? Um, so we, we've covered that. Um, so our data is not by service area, but by zones. Um, I'm not sure I know what that is getting at, um, but what, again, what we're asking for is um, every, every delinquent account and the level of delinquency, every account um, we presume has an address, a, a physical address associated with it, um, and that physical address has a zip code associated with it. So um, hopefully you can pull that. Um, I would say follow up with us. Um, after this, or, or once we get through the chat and, and we go to verbal questions, um, if, if your system is um, substantially different and, and that's not going to work for some reason. Um, okay, so we've had a number of questions about historical records. If the billing system doesn't track it, um, we understand. Give us what you can. Um, question. Are, is next question is are customers on a payment plan considered delinquent? Um, what we want to know is um, the total amount of outstanding unpaid uh, bill debt. Um, so if they are on a payment plan and they they have been making payments, um, then they are not delinquent. Um, and uh, we are asking again about um, the number of accounts on a payment plan. Um, so please note that you're, you're, uh, when, when you're answering that, right, that you, you can tell us how many of, of the, the accounts are on a payment plan. Uh, and again, if they're, if they're on a payment plan and they're making the payments, um, they're not delinquent. Um, if they're on a payment plan and they haven't been making payments, um, then, then that should be reported in the delinquency table. Um, Next question, uh, again, goes to uh, differentiating residential from non-residential accounts. Um, if you can't, if you have no way to extract or, or d distinguish between residential and non-residential, um, give us the total and, and then give us the total number of non-residential accounts you have and your best estimate of what portion of the debt belongs to those accounts uh, versus what portion of the debt belongs to your residential accounts. Um, and we will work from there and follow up if we need to. Um, okay, here's a very specific one. Cell B44 is asking for a dollar amount, but only allows for a yes or no answer. Um, well, darn it. We will <laughs> fix that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's a thing that has to do with data validation because I was trying to limit the responses and that probably is an artifact of copy paste. Um, there is an easy way to fix that. Um, should I go over that here or would it be better for people to just email me? Well, let's let's hold that 
Um, okay. I think what we'll want to do is g give written instructions as well. I mean, we'll, yeah. we can do it verbally now, but yeah, a, a, I can I can send screenshots on how to fix it. It's a very easy thing. Oh, I thought I'd caught everything. <laughs> Just, um, we're all working on tight time frames here, but uh, again, appreciate um, the person who caught that, um, and we will fix it. Um, Next question is, what is the end goal of this survey? Uh, so again, to, to reiterate, for those who may not have been on at the outset when I was talking about uh, the, sort of the goal and purpose of the survey, um, we're trying to develop a statewide uh, estimate of what uh, residential sector water debt looks like um, at this point into the pandemic. Um, we also want to understand the distribution of that debt. Um, both geographically um, as well as by magnitude um, so that uh, we can uh, use that data um, to run different analyses um, and inform discussions that are likely to be taking place uh, in, in, in the, the coming year at the state and federal level about different types of assistance um, to uh, systems and to households um, uh, to prevent a uh, significant amount of, of shutoffs uh, uh, when the pandemic ends. Um, and so again, um, we understand there have been other data collection efforts um, to date, but none of them has uh, done what this one is attempting to do, which is get a statewide look um, and, and really understand how the household debt has accumulated over time, how it's distributed um, so that we can inform uh, but policymakers about uh, the, 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 the best types of options for assistance going forward. That is, that is the, the, the foremost goal of the survey. Um, next question is, are you considering additional agencies that were not part of the original 150? Uh, so the answer is, um, we selected 150 um, in order to make sure that we could get uh, a, a response rate um, that would give us a, a high degree of accuracy and confidence when we were extrapolating uh, statewide. Um, the survey for, is open to any system with more than 10,000 connections, even if it wasn't uh, selected as part of the original 150. Uh, and again, the survey form can be downloaded from the Water Board's website. Um, and that's, uh, we'll, we'll go back to that link um, in a minute. Uh, so, so it's open to everyone. Um, we are targeting a, a really significant response rate here. Um, uh, we want to get um, as close to 100% um, response as possible because that will give us the best um, indication of, of what the statewide, uh, the, the statewide picture looks like uh, for household debt. Next question. Um, we ask customers to pay as much as they can, but we don't have them sign a repayment plan or track it anywhere. Um, again, if you're not tracking it, um, then you can't tell us how many are, uh, are giving you partial payments or have indicated they uh, are going to do that. Um, so um, what we would ask again is in that text box, um, to tell us uh, to, to the best degree that you can, um, given your records and your estimates of how many customers are um, paying something um, a as a way of, of trying to uh, prevent their um, delinquency amount from, from ballooning too much. Um, but if you don't track it, you don't track it, um, just give us your best estimate. Um, so again, there, there's this, uh, I think this is a, a follow on to maybe an earlier comment about debt being assigned by zone as opposed to zip code. Um, I, I think we'll need to follow up um, on, on this one. Um, but like I said before, we're um, hoping that every account has a physical address, every physical address is located in a zip code. Um, Next question is, are you looking for only active accounts? Well, I, 
I think um, the answer to that is yes. If an account is inactive, um, presumably it's not accumulating debt. Um, but if, if there are inactive accounts that say were active from March through June, and there's some there's a delinquency associated with that account, but it's now inactive um, for some reason. Uh, we we'd still like to know that delinquency amount, um, presuming that uh, at some point the, the the water system would try to uh, recoup that. Um, if your system's policy is that you write off in, in debt for inactive accounts, then I, I guess you don't need to tell us that. But um, Again, that, this is an instance where it would be helpful to have that that additional detail and context in in the text box. Um, can we combine zip codes if we are unable to separate them in Table Three? I think this is this this one. Maybe we'll we'll try to um, get to again when we um, just go to verbal after we get through the the um, text questions. I'm not sure why you would um, need to, to combine zip codes, um, but let's come back to that. Um, and maybe this next question will, will elucidate it somewhat. A bill cycle can overlap in several zip codes. And again, I'm not sure if the, the, the issue here is that a customer or an account may have multiple um, physical addresses in different zip codes, um, or if the issue is something else. Um, but I'm, I'm flagging both of these as two to, two to come back to um, once we get through the, the rest of the questions um, so we can understand what the issue is better. Um, next question is, what if we cannot complete this survey? Are there any consequences for the water system? Um, so this is a survey. It is not a in order from the board. Um, and so we are um, urging and uh, expecting a high level of response um, from systems. Um, we think it's, it's achievable to complete the survey in the time frame um, that we've set out um, and with the, the questions we've included. Um, our board has made it clear um, it, in multiple public uh, meetings now um, that their expectation is that um, we are going to get enough data to uh, develop statewide estimates. Um, they have also set forth their expectation that if we do not get enough data um, to develop statewide estimates uh, through this survey, um, they may uh, resort to issuing enforceable orders. So um, uh, take that as you will, um, but uh, we are here today to urge completion of the survey. Um, there are no uh, immediate consequences for a system that does not submit a response. Um, but, but I cannot guarantee that there won't be uh, consequences, including uh, an order down the road. Um, is the Excel sheet the complete survey? Um, is there also a web form? Uh, the Excel sheet is the complete survey. Um, so that is what uh, we're asking the systems to fill in is the Excel sheet that's up, um, the, basically the two different spreadsheets um, with, with the basic information. Um, there is no additional web form. Um, you fill out the sheet, you send it back to um, our email address and you're done. Um, next question is, can you explain what is meant by fees when asking if charges for other services are included? Um, would this include processing fees, return check fees, et cetera? Yes. Again, we're trying to understand the total amount of indebtedness that people have. Um, so anything that's on the bill that they haven't paid counts as debt. So any fees, any taxes, any charges for other services, um, that all counts. The next question, uh, something to consider. Um, many multifamily accounts, such as condos and townhomes, are individually metered and billed, but they will be lumped into the multifamily category with larger apartment complexes 
but their ability to pay bills is more similar to that of single family homes. Um, something to consider in the data. Yeah, I, the multifamily, it's a good point. The multifamily category is, is a uh, challenging one um, and a complex one um, for that reason, um, among others. Um, and we, we understand that. I think we want um, as much context as possible about how different systems um, categorize um, multifamily or master meter uh, customers um, with residential um, uh, occupants in them. Um, and uh, certainly uh, we know that if there's a landlord or, or property owner that's not paying um, a bill, it doesn't necessarily mean that the tenants um, uh, in that particular building um, are not paying. Um, and so we're, we're going to have to um, use the data we get and, and make some um, analysis and, and assumptions based on what you can tell us about your uh, multifamily and, and master meter customers. All right, moving ahead, um, the next question or comment is, um, our standard report does not differentiate residential versus non-residential. Um, again, if you cannot uh, distinguish or, or differentiate, give us everything um, and give us your best estimate of the portion of the debt that is uh, that belongs to your residential customers and your non-residential customers based on whatever data you have available to make that estimate. Um, that's, that's what we would ask. Um, so the next piece of this one is we do not track accounts delinquent by number of bills past due. Um, we do track by date blocks that can be representative of bill cycles. Is that sufficient? Yes. Um, please, please tell us in the text box that that's what you're doing, um, but that, that is, that is a, a good enough approximation um, for the purpose of this survey. Um, moving on, for table three, should we only be including the delinquent water bill or wastewater? Um, Again, we want the total bill. We want the total amount of debt. We want to understand um, over, the, over the, the course of this pandemic for people who aren't paying, what, how much do they owe in total, um, whatever goes on that bill. So including wastewater, including electricity, if that's on the bill, stormwater, taxes, fees, anything that goes on the bill. Um, that's what we want you to report. And again, if you can break out or just distinguish the water, the drinking water portion, all the better, but if you can't, um, that's okay. Next question. The link in the original meeting maker downloads a different version of the survey. The cell numbers are not aligning. Is there a different link? Um, Marielle, do you want to? Yeah, I can answer that. So it's likely the version that I had to create in order to comply with accessibility requirements because um, there are some things on this one that was mailed out that don't meet those requirements. So yeah, some things got shifted around for that reason. Um, but the, 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 one, the, the one in question um, was this one right here. I don't know if, if you guys can see it. Um, I, I can, if you have any specific questions about um, specific fields, I'm, happy to you know address them you can shoot an email um to the orpp inbox um but yeah that that's that's probably why you're seeing different locations so uh, pursuant to a state law that was passed a couple of years back all uh, state agencies um, can only post things on their website that are accessible um, and uh, when you're dealing with tables uh, and things, um, it, it's, it's a challenge. Um, so uh, we, we do try to send things out um, by email um, when we can't uh, quickly uh, meet the accessibility requirements, uh, especially when we're, we're moving fast on a project like this. So um, that's likely the, the issue, um, but hopefully um, there's not too much of a difference um, and we're happy to follow up offline um, for anyone who downloaded it um, and uh, would, would prefer to have the, the one that was emailed out to, to everyone else. Um, all right, I'm moving ahead here. 
Um, just to be clear that for line 24, you want only the delinquent amount account information on that specific day. Well, so what we want, the, the reason that date is there, um, that, that date is there is, is because that's when the governor uh, declared a state of emergency uh, due to COVID-19. Um, and so we're not interested in uh, bills that were delinquent prior to that date. Uh, we're, we're trying to understand uh, the debt that has accumulated um, since the, the emergency declaration. Uh, and again, we understand that not everyone's billing system doesn't end on March 3rd and the new ones start on March 4th. We're, we're, we're asking for it sort of as close to that date as, as possible. Um, but we want to know that um, as of that date, um, who was delinquent so that we can, when we're, we're looking at how debt has accumulated, um, basically subtract out uh, the, the amount of debt that was already there um, prior to the state of emergency declaration. Next question. Will fines be administered if a water system refuses to complete the COVID-19 survey? And if so, under what statute regulation? Um, so this is similar to an earlier question. Uh, and again, to reiterate, um, this is a survey. It is not a mandatory order. There are no fines associated with uh, non-response. Um, having said that, uh, again, our board has made clear that we need, as a state, um, good data that is going to allow us to make accurate um, estimates of, of the statewide debt level. Uh, and if we don't get it from the survey, um, they may uh, have order us to, order, to issue you orders. Um, so again, this is a survey. There are no fines for noncompliance. Um, but if we don't get the results we're looking for, um, we may move to orders. And those orders would be enforceable with fines um, under uh, the board's authority um, in the health and safety code, um, which uh, for those who want to look it up, it's section 116530. Um, okay, uh, next question. Oh, I scrolled up here. Give me a second. Sorry, everyone. I don't need to get back to where I was before. Um, here we go. So, if, okay, so the next question is if a utility is defining delinquent as 90 plus days past due, should table two only be including those delinquent accounts or also those that are zero to 30 days past due, 30 to 60, et cetera, even though we're not really considering those accounts delinquent? Yeah, I mean, if you don't consider an account delinquent until it's over 90 days past due, um, we're, we're going to get an incomplete picture of the amount of debt um, because that, that's a long time, even if your billing cycle is um, 90 days. I, that's, that's a lot of water use um, that, that could be um, accumulating that, that we're not going to see. Um, so I gave an earlier answer about if, if you know, you don't consider a bill past due until it's uh, 19 days delinquent or, or some figure like that, um, use that. But if it's, if it's 90 days past due um, and you don't consider delinquent until then, um, and you can tell us what is um, zero to 30 days past due, then that's, that's what we want. Uh, understanding, and you can put in the text box that you don't consider a bill to be delinquent per, pursuant to your system's policies until it's 90 uh, days plus past due. Um, okay, um, for Forrest, um, who says that um, they can't unmute, um, we, will, uh, we will come back. Um, I'm, I'm working through um, the, the, the chat messages first, um, and we will figure out how to get you unmuted. Um, so, okay, someone is saying that they've got data for the dollar amounts past due, but not the number of accounts. Um, I think that's one we'll have to follow up on um, uh, in, in separate correspondence or in a, on a separate call um, to understand what, what you could tell us, um, if anything, about the, the account numbers. Um, 
Okay, for uh, this is another question re related to the error cell B44. Would it be okay to put the response in the cell next to it? Um, Marielle? So unfortunately, um, the way that I extract this data, um, it, it very specifically like looks for a cell reference. So I would be looking for the answer to that question in cell B44. Um, in a little bit, I'll show how to get rid of um, the validation so that it doesn't restrict those values anymore. Um, and that should clear up that issue. Yeah, so, so basically the answer is um, we're, we're gonna sh sh show you, uh, give you the patch, the fix, um, so that you can, you can put the answer, the, the numeric answer into that cell. Um, Okay, the next question is, if cell B46 was answered as yes, should cell B47 have an NA option? Um, Mario, can we go to B46? Um, well, so I, I think that the answer is if the, um, if you already offer repayment plans, um, then, you would answer 47 yes because you it, it's 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 consistent with your answer in 46 um and th that'll be the easiest way that way we we can see um we can see everyone who's an who's offering and we can see the difference between who is offering now and who plans to offer uh those repayment plans um, the next question concerns the due date. Uh, will it continue to be November 25th? Yes. Uh, again, our board has made clear that they, they want to have results by the end of the year. Um, we need time to, to look at the data that's come in and follow up. If your system um, for staffing or, or other reasons um, believes that you can't make the deadline, um, please follow up with us. Um, and let's talk through what might be possible. Um, but we're, we're gonna evaluate um, those requests on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we're not granting extensions uh, at this point. Um, so uh, this is the question on zones versus zip codes. Um, additional pro this will require additional programming to retrieve this information. Okay, so again, here's, this is a good example of um, us needing to understand how much additional time it would take, what what a system would be able to provide with additional time, um, and what can be done by the 25th. So please, um, we'll, we will follow up um, uh, on on that um, after this webinar, um, because that we do we do want to make sure we can get as much as possible. Um, we don't have the latitude to offer. Um, significant uh, extensions of time at this point. So if it's something that would, that it sounds like this particular issue would take a long time, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be possible. Um, okay. Um, the next time you need, the, the next uh, comment is the next time you need data like this, would you please give us at least a month? Um, we have very few staff available, uh, although we, un we understand the value um, and, I do want to express, um, you know, we understand this is a very short turnaround. We understand we're heading into um, uh, the holiday period. We understand that um, everyone is stretched thin um, due to COVID. Um, and uh, again, I, I think our, our board um, has expressed the intent that we need this data by the end of the year. Our prior uh, voluntary data collection effort um, was not successful. Um, and uh, had it been, we wouldn't be where we are now. Um, and so uh, we understand everyone's working under um, constraints. Um, we are also working under uh, constraints at, at the board um, and uh, we're asking everyone to do the best they can, the best they can um, in, in the time they have. Uh, and again, for systems that really are, um, feel like they need extra time to give us um, data, um, please follow up with us separately. 
Um, the, here's a comment on a uh, system that has a combined bill um, for water, uh, sewer, and trash, um, reimbursement agreements for how payments are applied. I expect to address this in the comments section. Um, thank you, please, please do. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're just trying to understand every, every, everything that goes on that water bill, um, how much of that is, is delinquent at this point. Um, clarification on table two, should each account only be in one of the billing cycle cells? Example, an account that has del been delinquent for four billing cycles has also been delinquent for three billing cycles, et cetera. Uh, yeah, I think if I understand the question correctly, um, the, the answer is it, it, it's the maximum or it's, it's, it's the highest number of billing cycles um, that the account has been delinquent for. Um, that's, that's what we wanna know. Um, it, you don't have to fill in, it, if it's been delinquent for four, we know it's also been delinquent for three, two, and one. Um, you don't have to fill that in. Um, so here's another question. Um, please let us know about this survey. When I open the website, it shows these additional questions. Um, ah, okay. So this is someone who I, I believe has opened up the survey that is um, being administered to the small and medium sized systems in the state. Um, like I said, we've got a concurrent effort going. Uh, Actually, I think this is the voluntary survey. Oh, is this the voluntary survey? Yeah, I'm, re I'm recognizing these questions. This is the one from June. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, just disregard that altogether. Um, we should actually take that down at this point. Um, we did, uh, as I mentioned, um, issue a survey back in June looking at system level impacts, um, but we have, uh, we, we didn't get a, a particularly good response rate on that survey. Um, and we are no longer using it. So um, please, please disregard that, that um, and um, work on this survey um, on, on household debt. Um, all right, let's see. Um, the next question, um, would it be helpful to also re request the dollar amount as of uh, March 4, um, for our system, the account number has not changed substantially. However, the, the dollar amount has changed. Um, so uh, I believe we are asking for that in uh, row 26. That is, that is the uh, dollar amount question associated with the delinquent uh, accounts. Um, and so, uh, if I if I understand the, the question correctly, um, so we we will be able to look at the um, answer to twenty four, the answer to twenty five, um, and and get a sense of um, how much the the debt has uh, increased. Um, I if I, if I'm understanding that one correctly, Marielle, is is that your understanding of this question? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if if you again, that's that's what the comments are for. If you want to provide further clarification, please. Um, you know, the, the, these comments are helpful to us. So definitely, like, provide further context in the box. All right. Um, so. All right, someone did ask about SB 998. Um, let me just address SB 998 um, really briefly. Um, as um, the executive order from Mar uh, sorry, April uh, 2nd stated, uh, and that's executive order uh, N42-20, um, uh, SB 998 uh, remains in effect um, and uh, the executive order is in effect. Um, so uh, both the statute and the executive order are operative. Um, and while SB 998, so, so the only uh, thing the executive order does um, that is essentially different from 998 is that um, 998 does allow for shutoffs after certain uh, timelines and conditions are met, the executive order prohibits shutoffs. Um, but uh, 
998 does have a uh, distinction at the 60 day past due amount um, related to fees. Um, again, for the purpose of this survey, we're not looking at that 60 day threshold. We're looking at the, the, the total uh, delinquent billing amount. Um, and uh, if, if your system doesn't consider a, a, a bill delinquent until uh, 60 days, um, that's fine. Um, but if, uh, as I mentioned in response to the other question, it's 90 days or beyond, um, that, that's too long. We, we want to know um, what, what is delinquent um, as, as of a shorter uh, time period, no, no more than uh, two 30-day billing cycles. Um, so the next question, um, we normally offer payment terms for delinquent balances. However, nothing specific for COVID that may be a longer duration based on accumulated debt. How should we answer B46? Um, B46, I believe, is, is do you is, uh, have, um, do you already offer repayment plans? So the answer should, should be yes. You already offer repayment, plan, it, it, repayment plans. Um, and you can note in the comment box that, that they're not directly in response to COVID. Um, uh, again, we, we want to know where, uh, which, which systems have, have the ability for customers to um, utilize repayment plans um, already on, on the books, um, regardless of whether they're extended or, or not. Um, the next question, I thought row 26 was as of the last bill due date, not as of uh, March 4. Um, that's correct. Um, the, the 26 is as of the, the last bill date. Um, and then the next uh, question or clarification is, um, right, what are we talking about? 26 is of the last bill due date, not as of March 4. Um, so I hope that's clear now. Um, now, I had seen a bunch of additional things in the chat box, and now I don't see any more. Um, okay, Next. so I think this would be a great opportunity for anybody who has a verbal question. I'll go ahead and unmute everyone. Um, or not unmute everyone, but give you the feature to um, unmute yourself um, and ask a question verbally um, for any clarification or anything like that. Yeah, and again, just to clarify on the, the, the rows 24 through 26 issue, um, the, 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 the commenter um, or the comment in the check box, check, chat box is correct. Uh, what we're picking up in uh, on the March 4 question is just the total number of delinquent accounts, not the total amount. Um, we're only picking up the total amount as of uh, the, the, the most recent billing cycle. That, that is correct. Um, I'm very confused here because I thought I saw 20 some messages in the chat box and now they're not there. Um, one more just popped in before we um, go to verbal questions, um, which is, will the recording of the meeting be available? And I believe the answer to that is yes. Uh, Mary, is that correct? Yes, it will be available and posted on the website. Um, I'll be sure to send everyone who registered for this webinar um, a link um, to where that where this recording will be and um, additional information such as um, a blank form, um, other FAQs um, and, and whatnot. So, and other, and an email address to, to ask any questions that um, may, may come up. Great. And, and someone made a, a good suggestion. That, um, if someone does have a question, they should raise their hand or uh, indicate that they'd like to speak um, in, in the chat box um, so we can just manage uh, manage the, the talking here um, coming up. So um, please do that if you do want to ask a, a question. Um, please raise your hand or, or um, put an entry into the chat box um, that you'd like to speak. And Mary, I'll ask you to monitor that and um, just 
just call people in order. Okay, um, so I'm seeing at least a couple things pop up in chat. Um, all right, so first we'll go to Forrest. Yeah, um, hi, thank you for some responses. I, I think, you know, we understand what the state's trying to do, but uh, the billing systems for each agency are a bit different. And, and our water bills are handled by a county utility billing service. So for some of those other services, you know, they're really not, they're, they're not up to us. We have some special agreements, but you've given us direction on how to handle that. But also we're a little unique because we, uh, it, we don't shut off for non-payment of bills. It just rolls over to the tax roll at a certain time of the year. So when you're looking for a certain amount of information to link with these, I have to see what's rolled over to the tax roll and it gets a little, it's gonna get a little complicated. But for some of the data that's included in your tables, there's a lot of programming that would be required. I mean, we just started trying to do these agent reports in between May and June, trying to get out ahead of it. And we found that we're able to produce a certain amount, but for the level of detail you're looking for, we'll do our best, but we'll have some caveats and thank you for the instruction. But I just want to kind of give you those comments back that it's not as simple as, hey, just go get that information. Uh, we're in the middle of an upgrade of our utility building system. And so that's going to go for two to three months. Anything else, even before we get an order, would take a number of months to implement. So we just want to pass that comment on that. We understand what you're looking for, but it's not, it's not that simple to get. So and, and we we appreciate the comment, um, and we understand yeah. that um, there are some systems that have uh, the the type of billing system challenges um, you've described, or other billing system challenges um, that's going to make um, comprehensive completion of of the survey uh, a challenge. So um, you know we, we want to uh, work with everyone um, again to to give us as much as you can, given um, the capabilities and constraints you have. Okay, just, just and when I'll, I'll explain the zone issues. We have a zone 40 area, which is receive surface water and our non zone 40 areas don't. So uh, those are geographical locations and it's not split up by service area. It's just whatever service areas in zone 40 is in zone 40. Then we have our non zone 40. So I may submit a map to you so you understand that with the comments. So you kind of have a better picture of that. But that's how our billing system and our financial systems are set up. So I just want to clarify that comment for you. Uh, understood. Th thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to go to Brian. Hi, Max. Thank you for uh, taking the time to answer these questions. Um, very similar to Forrest, um, to touch base on that zip code issue. Um, I think a lot of utilities are similar where we collect our data based on uh, billing, uh, reading cycles and groups that sometimes there's uh, overlap with zip code. So um, I'll be reporting the data um, where the zip codes are going to be closely aligned with the um, reading cycles that we have. And I uh, wanted to specify in the comments that it'll be a, a very close match, but not a 100% match. So I'm assuming that, that will be sufficient for this purpose. It will. And, and thank Excellent. you for the clarification. Thank you. Yeah. And then I, um, I also had um, earlier in the chat, I had a um, couple questions that uh, uh, one part was kind of um, overlooked. Um, so I, I was the one who asked about, we, we don't track um, accounts by how many past uh, bills um, they're past due, but we do by certain dates. Um, we only go back to 120 days past. So I know that the table is looking for one bill, two bills, three bills, four bills, five bills, more than five. Um, I can tell you four or more. Um, is that something that we just didn't specify in the box that you know, I can I can approximate, let people, you know, let you guys know how many bills are one, two, three, or then four or more. Would that be inappropriate to just fill in the in that four box and then and make note of that? Yes. Excellent. Um, the other question someone raised was for the accounts that are passed to four, um, they're also being passed to um, you know, three bills, two bills, one bills. I do not have the way to separate that. Is that going to be an issue where uh, I'm reporting one customer's account number as one bill passed to, two bills passed to, three bills passed to, four to, is, is that something I should note that um, we, we, we don't have a way of separating that? Right, and, and uh, since you don't, I, I mean, you should note that. Um, okay. And again, just tell, just answer the, the, 
the question is, given what you can do, right, telling us how many are four or more, and, um, you know, telling us that you can't separate um, between one, two, three, and four. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Max. And uh, thanks again for making this a voluntary. I do hope you get uh, sufficient results, because I think if it is something that's uh, going to be mandated. I think a lot of agencies are going to have a, a, a challenging time. So I appreciate having it voluntary and letting the agencies that, that can do it, um, you know, have the opportunity to do it and hope, hope we get a good turnout for it. So thank you. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Um, next, Chris N. Hey, thanks, Max. Um, yeah, uh, same, uh, along the same lines as Forrest and Brian, uh, just with the ability for us to extract that data from our system and break up zip codes and also go into an earlier question we had about the uh, drawing out the commercial. Um, basically our, our system, when we run queries, doesn't give us those options. It's not as simple as pushing a button and being able to get the exact amount of data broken down how you want it. So um, I think you kind of clarified, and let me just make sure this is correct, that um, if we do run those issues, you prefer us to provide that data and then just comment on what our restrictions were, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that's all I'm seeing right now in the chat for people who wanted to ask verbal questions. Um, Mary, has anyone raised their hand or otherwise indicated they have a question? No, I'm not seeing any. All right, well, um, if anyone does have a question um, that we haven't covered already, uh, now's your chance. Go ahead, unmute, and ask your question. Uh, who do we contact? Um, is there one contact person utility we can work with um, relating to this effort? Yeah, so um, in, in order so, so we can just track things, um, we've got a, a, an email address for all inquiries related to, to the survey, which is on the introduction and instructions tab. Um, Mario, can you go there um, on the screen? Um, but it's up. Yeah, it's, it's up there. Um, it's also um, on the email we sent um, with, with the survey itself. Um, you're also welcome to, to contact me um, if you have a question, um, but it'll, it'll be easier for me to um, just quickly uh, ensure you get a response if you send it to the main um, email address, which is the ORPP uh, dash water conservation at waterboards.ca.gov. Um, and um, uh, again, just, just looking here, um, let's, let's show uh, Mario right now um, what the fix is for cell B44. Um, we will also send out um, this afternoon uh, an, an email to everyone um, with instructions, written instructions on the, the cell B44 fix. Yeah, so, and this actually will apply to like any cell where you're trying to enter something that, um, you, you know, it's, tell, it's rejecting your answer. So this is something that's called um, data validation. And um, essentially you go to like in, in the most recent version of Excel in the desktop version, I don't know if Mac is any different, sorry, <laughs> um, but on the data, tab, um, you click on the cell that has the validation and there's this menu item right here that says data validation. And when you click on that, it pulls up um, this little thing where you can have the various settings. Just, just clear it and that'll go away. So now that you can enter a value So easy. Um, and yeah, I, I will I'll provide more detailed instructions. Like I said, I don't know um, if it's different on Mac because um, I don't work with that one on a daily basis, but um, hopefully it's similar enough. 
Uh, for clarification, I'm looking at the Mac version right now and it follows the exact same. So it should be no problem. And I do see a hand raised. Uh, Jason, go ahead. All right, well, while we're waiting for Jason, um, we did get a, a request. Um, can you show us one more time how to do that? So, Marielle, can you? Yes. <laughs> one more time. And, uh, yeah, one more time. Okay, so any cell where you have, you're trying to enter something and it's telling you it's refusing to accept your response, go to that cell, click on it. So I'll do it on this one. You can see at the moment, it's only allowing you to answer yes or no. And it'll, if you try to enter something else like a number, it says this value doesn't match the data validation restrictions. So what you need to do is usually like this is the, the default tab. You need to go over to the data tab, which is here, and then um, go to data tools and the data validation menu. So when you click on that, um, you go to um, you click on data validation and it brings up this little window that has the various settings. And all you need to do is go down to the bottom left and hit the clear all button, which should get rid of the validation. Oh, is it doing it? Clear all. Hmm. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> it worked last time. There we go. Okay. And it gets rid of it. I believe someone's been uh, doing it or following along who, who just told us in the chat that it worked. So thank you um, for doing that, Travis. Um, and again, we will send out a, a, an email this afternoon just with the step-by-step -step instructions um, for, for how, to, how to do it. I would like to request that um, for, if you're getting rid of validation and you're putting in a numerical value, please no commas because when I read that into my database, it interprets that comma um, as, as a, a string value rather than as a numerical value. And so um, instead of seeing a number, it sees a word. Add the please no commas to the email with the, with the instruction. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments uh, before we close? And again, I just reiterate, um, I, I gave this answer um, in response to a couple of the questions in the chat. If you do have a serious concern about not being able to complete the survey um, by next week, please do follow up with us uh, individually. So in response to Brian's question, um, just uh, no commas in numerical answers. And, and in, most of, in most cases, um, I've correctly done the data validation. So um, <laughs> that shouldn't be an issue. It's just if you clear the validation, um, then it's not doing those checks anymore. And yes, we will be sending out written instructions to the fix. And then I see that one more question in, uh, um, so that, that there was an initial list of 150 systems. Will this list be updated or revised to know which systems have or have not responded? So after the survey closes, um, uh, we will all do um, our COVID safe uh, Thanksgiving break. Uh, and then when we come back on November 30th, um, we will assess what responses um, we've gotten. Um, and at that point, um, we will report to our board on December 1st at their board meeting um, uh, on what the response level looks like um, so that they can publicly discuss um, whether uh, they want us to take any additional action. Uh, so that, that'll be our public report out um, on, on the survey response uh, on December 1st. And uh, looks like last question that came in here. Um, responses are publicly available, correct. 
Yes, um, again, we're not going to re be reporting out on a system by system basis, um, but um, uh, the, the, the data uh, itself is, is public data. And, and thank you to um, Tim and Sue um, from AWWA, Cal Nevada, um, for uh, encouraging um, people to complete the survey as, be as best they can. Um, we, we all think that, um, or, or again, I'll just say, I think there's, our, our board really believes that this data will be beneficial in terms of helping uh, along the assistance discussion and, and really do urge everyone to complete it uh, to the best of their ability. So again, thank you all for, for joining us uh, today. Um, please do not hesitate to follow up if you have additional questions or concerns um, via email. Uh, and uh, we look forward to receiving your survey responses um, by this time next week. And we are adjourned.